The oh arms. my god, he has her hands. Hello, I am Hazel Hayes and this is my kitchen. You're going to be seeing a lot of it in the coming weeks because we are coming to you from home to present Amazon's Prime Video Club. We decided to get together just like we did in the old days and watch things, you know. Remember the old days, February? I certainly don't. Anyway, uh, this week we're going to be talking about superhero gritty drama, The Boys, which I absolutely loved. And also we're going to be looking at Fight Club a little later on and talking about that, which is kind of breaking the first rule of Fight Club, really. You do not talk about Fight Club. Joining me to talk about that is Monia Chihuahua. Monia, well. Yes! Hazel, Hello. you saved me. I'll tell you what, I'm down to my last, <laughs> I'm down to my last ca uh, can of tin tomatoes. Oh, I've memorized man. every word to all seven Trek films. I need to get this film chat out. To me, you're yeah. the film pro. Yeah, you're, oh, you're the okay. pro. I'm the kind of like, I'm just dipping my toe in here and there. You know, like, I know you've watched every episode back to front. You've read the source material. That's a lot of pressure calling me the, the film buff here and giving, giving me all that trivia. Yeah, but you to, are, though, because I've everything. seen, I thought, you know, <laughs> let me have a look. Let me have a look at Hazel's YouTube channel. I'm seeing... Saoirse Ronan. I'm seeing all these BAFTA Oscar winning actors and I'm here thinking like yeah. I've just interviewed my plant this morning, you know, so <laughs> I feel like you are the right person to have in the steering wheel. Oh, bless you. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we'll make a good team in that case. All right. Well, as I said, we are going to talk about Fight Club. But before we get to that, shall we have a little chat about the boys? I think we should whet their appetites. People love superheroes. Back if you knew half the shit they get up to. First episode of The Boys. Now, I thought this was going to be a heartwarming tale about two best friends who, you know, had a dog growing up together. Absolutely not. I'm seeing Ooh. gore. I'm, mm. I'm hearing, you know, swearing in the first two minutes. Fucking diabolical. I had to tell Nan to leave the room, do you know what I mean? But I love that is straight in. They're not pulling any punches, are they? Who's up for that? <laughs> it's dark and it's real. Well, I'm, I know we're only talking about the first episode, but I may have got a bit trigger happy and just got to see, this is what I'm more. telling you, film buff, <laughs> film I buff. I just stop. I honestly, I haven't like binged something like this since like Prison Break or 24. Like remember when you just could not stop watching every time I get to the end of an episode, I'm like, oh, I need to know more. I need to know what happened. So good. Uh, the show starts with a wonderful opening sequence, action packed, mm. where we see the superheroes in full swing, which is amazing. And the VFX are incredible, and the stunts are incredible, and already I'm hooked, I'm in. And then we cut to this guy named Huey. He's the unassuming kind of nerdy guy who works in an electronics store, and mm. he, you know, meets up with his girlfriends. They're walking down the street. They're having this lovely chat about maybe moving in together. It's so sweet. It's so heartwarming. And then, bam! Some stuff happens. If you are eating a jam sandwich or any form of mince, I would put that <laughs> down right now. Well, I mean, we can't keep, you know, laying pipe at your dad's place. Up until here, I kind of felt it was a little bit too on the nose. They were a bit too cutesy, and then I see why. Oh, no, it's and coming. His... Oh. Look, kiss. Little comment about Billy Joel. I've seen this Give a few Give him one last though. peck. Yeah. Give him one last oh, peck. No. It's your last one ever. The smirch, Billy. <gasps> oh, God. I... See, I was, at this point, I was thinking... That is so well done. Was she the superhero? But I'm going to look up for the spine because I didn't see it last time. Yeah, and I don't know why. This is so gross, but you can literally see bits of her bones and spine and stuff. Oh, uh, what's that little flap thing there? Floating. I don't know. There's a floating skull. flap. Oh, I can see the spine. Yeah, do you see it? And then you start to see these like runners, and you're like, wait, what is? Who is that? There's someone in blue. Mm. What? He looks like a crazy courier. I can't stop. 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 And then his performance, oh my God, his performance here. Oh. oh, no, the arms. Oh my God, he has her hands. Robin. No. Robin! Robin! I think the worst bit is realizing at that point that this is not your classic superhero yeah. show. How do you spank a soup? No, I feel like they're taking the, the sort of superhero paradigm and then they're doing something really interesting with it, with, you know, like we've all seen S Superman running, you know, faster than a speeding bullet. Mm -hmm, but he's never mm -hmm. run through a person. 
No way. And to see that so physically, so viscerally. And did you know that's all the effects, all the all the blood, the entire everything that they did there, everything that splashed in really? all completely the effects. It took eight months to build that. Scene. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean and you can Imagine, tell, I mean the detail is so yeah. specific. The only moment I've ever had in a superhero film that shocked me that much, and it's a bit of a spoiler if you've not seen the amazing Spider Man, it's quite old, is when Emma Stone um, falls oh. through the clock st- clock tower. Bam. breaks oh, the neck or whatever and she's gone yeah and everyone's yeah. like wait you that's not supposed to happen in a... great like it's everyone's so like visceral. that's not supposed to happen in a superhero film yeah and, and that's, that's why it stays with you. you yeah absolutely and i think they've accomplished something really really great here um which is that you know we're getting so many r-rated uh superhero type films now and we obviously we had deadpool and stuff which i think nailed it but sometimes i think they're just trying to throw the f-bomb in a couple times and it just yeah. doesn't feel quite right but mm-hmm. i feel like i feel like the boys really nails that tone and it, it does so throughout like it kind of hits the comedy beats the darkness mm-hmm. the the drama like and 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 then any of that kind of like slightly more adult stuff they absolutely nail that that um contrast if we actually had superheroes today like in the real world they would just be massive influencers you know that whole influencer yeah. culture yeah. smiles for the camera as soon as the camera goes off super corrupt super Hit horrible me. that's that's what it felt like <laughs> do you know what i mean um so yeah i really like that idea of superheroes as a business as like an influencer business i thought that was quite yeah it felt quite fitting and it's very true to the comics as well because this is based on the comic the boys oh um, is it, and it mm. yeah and it, it it had that very real like what you want is to sort of see this world outside your window like if we were to live as we are today and look outside Mm. like there's billboards of them they're on they're on lunch boxes you know they're on Mm -hmm. tv everywhere there's movies based around them they are you know they're like i say a corporate entity in themselves they're a money-making machine again it gives it that really grounded feeling it's like if i'm me sitting in my living room right now watching this on tv those superheroes slot into this world so easily Exactly. So I love a good fight scene. Absolutely love a good fight scene. I'm talking, you know, Mission Impossible, Fallout. I love the fight scene in that. And this one at the end of episode one, I reckon that's up there, you know. Please, 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 no, please. Okay, so this is the superhero about to kill Earth's Huey. Most mighty champions of the innocent, motherfucker. Sorry about the mess. I love a good car through a window. I love a good villain getting so... taken out by a vehicle. He's just and so then calm London about it. calling starts playing, and you're yeah. just like, yeah, sure, brilliant, mm. brilliant. I think Huey has superpowers. I'm telling you, because he's just got that look in his eyes. Do you know what I mean? I think that's anxiety. <laughs> Boy. But we'll soon find out. And I love this as well because, like, if we're going to be nerdy about it, what a character mm. arc. Like, you're talking about the guy who at the beginning of the episode got told, you don't have the fight. You yeah, can't exactly. Do this. And now he's coming back. And he's going to, I think he's going to come back. I think he might help us. So here's Carl Urban fighting nobody, which is amazing. Hey, so I'm not has... going to lie. I was thinking that the claws were going to come out because this guy looks like Wolverine. He does a bit, doesn't he? I mm. think he feels to me like a mix between. Jack Sparrow, Morpheus, and Wolverine. <laughs> I love how he's finding him by spitting blood at him. That's just so yes. extra. It's so like clever in a kind of mm. simple way, but it's it's so beautifully simple. All right, and now he's, he's Here struggling. Here he is, Huey. Come on, Huey. Come on, Huey. So who are you? A fucking spy? For who, huh? This is great. The CGI is amazing. The, the, the it's VFX. really like even the way he's kicking the glass on the floor and everything. Like the attention mm. to detail is, and he's got a crowbar. Oh God, no! Come on, Huey. This is your moment, mate. It's your time to shine, Huey. Forget Superman. Forget Captain America. It's all about Huey. <laughs> Huey from the TV store. Nerdy nerd boy. Oh no! Ah. Oh, and I love this little theme tune. It. We get this little theme every time Huey's about to do something a little bit heroic. Oh no! Electrocuted in the bottom. We've all been there. Have we? He's got a very oh. peachy bump for an invisible man. I gotta say. Quite peachy. Quite peachy. I hadn't noticed that myself. Mod- obviously. Modeled this character after me. So they had to film this a bunch of different ways. They had a guy in a suit. 
uh, sort of Andy Circus style, uh, actually doing the fight in the suit. But then they had Carl Urban recreate the whole choreography without anyone there. And just imagine this poor guy fighting nobody. <laughs> and then they have to see. <laughs> That's been me in. for the last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Just fighting yourself. <laughs> there's a lot of action and it's wonderful, but there's also, there's some great drama in there. I mean, you've got some mm. big hitters in terms of the cast that they've got involved. We've got Simon Pegg, as you saw there, we had uh, Carl Urban, a wonderful chameleon of an actor. What do I look like? Like you're starring in a porn version of The Matrix. Elizabeth Shue is playing uh, Madeline Stilwell, who's like the big bad boss lady. Um, and even sort of some of the newbies, even though they're not, you know, new, they've, they've all sort of been in TV shows and movies before, are, um, are just wonderful in their roles. I think the casting is brilliant. And also it's tackling some pretty big issues. I mean, there's a, there's a really heavy scene with a character named Starlight, or her name's Annie, played by Erin Moriarty. She's from a small, you know, town somewhere and suddenly she's in the big city and she's thrown into the the midst of it and, and she's wide eyed and but you can kind of tell she's a bit of a fighter as well and I like that there's there's no characters in this who are just naive you know there's no one stupid in it um, but she's uh, being shown around the the new digs by uh, one of the superheroes named uh, the deep mm. and next thing she turns around and uh, she's found herself in a bit of a Weinstein moment with this guy or we come together as a team you and me just roll with the punches for like three minutes, maybe. It's not a big deal. And then you know what happens? All your dreams come true. We've said before that, that it already feels like they're drawing on influencer culture. And you're like, okay, cool, tick. That's quite a modern day reference. And then it's almost like seeing the Me Too movement creep through into the superhero world as well. So it just, it just feels very, even though the comics I'm guessing were written, you know, a while back, it does mm. feel very 2020 and beyond. Yeah, it feels you know? very topical and, and it handled really well. Like I, I, having just watched stuff like Bombshell and The Morning Show that takes that topic and handles it really, really well, I think. Um, mm. Like sensitively, but also doesn't pull any punches. Um, I felt like that watching this as well. You know, it's not gratuitous, but you certainly feel uncomfortable. Yeah, also, so one of the first times that we've really seen uh, uh, a superhero delve into that territory, you never really get a, a male superhero being called out for being a bit of a predator. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, actually. I think we've seen superheroes through the male gaze for so long, even in mm. terms of the women's costumes and, you know, everything like that. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I guess we've seen... Uh, with Captain Marvel and then sort of DC's attempts with uh, Harley Quinn and that kind of thing to, to bring it back a bit more to the sort of female gaze. I feel like uh, this is certainly doing that. It's telling the story through a woman's eyes. At the moment, in the current times, being on lockdown, being quarantined, a lot of people have been reading, going back to George Orwell, 1984. I've never read it, and I know that's more for me, and I'm actually reading it now. I'm about 100 pages in. Are you? But this oh, feels I'll talk to you very... when you're finished with that. It's not yeah, a book yeah, club, yeah. but we, we'll talk separately. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're such nerds. We've managed to make a film club, a book club. But, um, you know, it's very. Or, this feels very Orwellian in, in the sense mm. that your know, superheroes, everything you know about them is completely controlled by... Um, you know, by the press, they have a press team yeah. to make sure nothing happens untowards. Even when A-Train eventually says sorry to uh, to Huey, yeah. it's like a scripted apologist. Like, just so you know, before he says sorry, nothing he says can be held accountable in the court of law or stuff like that. It's like, whoa, yeah. that's not how you say sorry. So I think they've handled that really well. And like Simon Pegg's character is a good, like it's, it's a good way to get that exposition across that like we live in a world where people just see, you know, the superheroes are up there, we're down here, we're just mere mortals. That's how it is. And we just accept mm -hmm. that. And you even like what you're saying about the Orwellian stuff, like when in that scene I was talking about where Starlight meets the deep and she's getting shown around the HQ, and they're literally telling her about the satellites they have in the sky that could read a license plate from, you know, miles away. Um, mm -hmm. So we're already getting the sense of this sort of surveillance culture and the idea yeah, that the big brother. have, yeah, so much power and so much control over everything. All right, well, Munya, I'd like to introduce you. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to be a cheesy name. It's a new segment. It's a new segment I've thrown together. I'm very excited about this. Please don't judge me. It's What's called, it called? IMD Bingo. Come on, it's quite because there's a B in it. 
cut the string. I'm trying here, man. I'm pulling Everyone together. I'm in my now. kitchen, all right? Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> anyway, look, there's some really good trivia up there. So what I thought <clears> was <throat> I put together <laughs> a couple of questions for you. I've never seen you this happy <laughs> at your own jokes. <laughs> oh, I'm only ever this happy at my own jokes. This, I'm the only yeah, one. this is the happiest <laughs> I've seen you. If you want a good laugh out of me, just get me to make my own stupid jokes. <laughs> um, all right. So come here. I'm going to ask you a couple of a couple of questions. Sorry, I'm fixing my mic like I'm some kind of actual professional presenter, but you can so clearly see my kitchen sink. Look at you. you. You've Look gone proper go into game show mode. It's now Hazel, the game head. show host. <laughs> I love it. I wish I had like graphics and a whole, a whole thing. Oh, Maybe we can it. do that for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no prizes if you get them or don't get them. Oh, brilliant. Well, now I'm super motivated. I can't give you anything. Um, <laughs> all right, so, so in the comics, Huey Campbell mm. is drawn in using the likeness of which actor in the TV show? So it just so happens... Drawn. It just mm -hmm. so happens, yeah, that the uh, comic book artist drew their version mm -hmm. of Huey based on an actual actor in real life, but that actor is in the series. Oh, is it... Just because of how nerdy he looks. It's not, is it Simon Peck? Yay! Yes! Come on! Good luck. I knew it, because he's like, a, he's, you know, he's not in a horrible way, but he does look a bit nerdy. Oh, he's a bit of a nerd, but there's nothing wrong with that. Nerd no, no, pride. that's a good thing. I know, that's my don't Tinder be, bio. Be I look a bit nerdy. We all do. <laughs> We're, we're on a show talking about superheroes. I mean, they, yeah, they I know, know our, our secrets out on you. I can't um, believe I've got that right, Simon so Pegg. No, it's amazing. And so they got him to play his dad, which I think is really, that's really cute. Like, it's it's good, such it's an, nice. Imagine like being that guy back in the day who, who like based that on Simon Pegg, who clearly is a fan of. And yeah. then some years later, that character's Seeing dad gets played by Simon Pegg. That's so cool. That's I would amazing. completely, I would fangirl like in the <laughs> that. So, and as I said, uh, the, the series is based on a comic. And I know mm. about some of the, like, the differences. So the actual team, like the lamplighter who we see at the beginning is retiring. He's part of that team. And then you have a little bit of a sort of gender swaps as well. Yeah, Madeline Stilwell was her character in the comics. The big boss man is, is a guy. And so they, mm. they, they made her a lady, which is really interesting. When you get a little bit further down the series, um, yeah. her relationship with Homelander is... Uh, oh, is it? Oh. Kind of interesting. No, I, and I, I say that, that you're going to assume I mean sexual, and I don't know if I do. It's just really okay, bizarre. Right. There's a sort of an is Oedipus it? thing going on. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going back to the source material to sort of to see a bit more in the comics. I feel like we've got a lot of nerd fans watching who are like screaming things at me that they want to say about the comic that I don't know. No, but I like that though. I, I, like, I, I'm one for watching a film and then going back onto YouTube or wherever and going 50 things you missed or 50 Easter eggs. You know, I'm a big gamer. I'm, I'm, always, I'm all about the Easter eggs and stuff. So I'm more than willing to find out every minute detail about those superheroes. You know, I want to get right in the latex. Wait, no, that sounds wrong. I want to... <laughs> right in the spandex. <laughs> So that was The Boys, which you can, of course, watch now on Amazon Prime. It is a really, really good binge watch. The whole of season one is there, so get stuck in. And uh, The Boys will be back in town later on this year, as I said, with season two. So look, there's only one film we can really go to straight from The Boys, I think. If, if, if we're going to go mm -hmm. for a little bit of blood and gore with a little bit of romance thrown in and a little bit of commercialism and maybe even some existentialism, it's got to be Fight Club. I've been raised on television to believe that one day we'll all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. But we won't. The film that launched a thousand first rule of jokes. I promise I'm not going to make any myself, but if you want to see a couple, we'll pop them up on screen now for you. We'll just take it back a little step here because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we need to talk about Fight Club. We need to introduce it. Now, if you haven't seen Fight Club, don't beat yourself up about it, eh? Um, oh, no, two puns, two puns in one not, show. I don't know. They're not, pay, they're not paying me enough for this. <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, yeah. That's your that's your two pun warning. I've had enough. Okay, I'm fine. Well, you won't get any more. You won't no. get any more. I promise. It wasn't even a pun. It was just a silly really? joke. Just a bad joke, really. <laughs> um, yeah, but it is one of my favorite movies of all time. It came out at the time when I was sort of starting to really discover cinema. And I'd be, you know, totally blown away by films. It was 99, which I want, I want to say 99, which is the same year as The Matrix. The girl had done her homework. I feel like it's weird because it came up for me again recently seeing Joker. It, I, I feel like Fight Club is the film Joker wanted to be. Hmm, interesting. For me personally. Okay. We want, we, what maybe do, what does that mean? What does that mean? As in, I think it was trying to say something about toxic masculinity and commercialism 
and um, capitalism and sort of this search for materialism and like there's so much going on in it. And I, I think I think to be fair, both films were misunderstood a little bit. So like a lot of people came out of Fight Club going, we should set up a Fight Club. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not <laughs> yeah. the point. <laughs> Me and you. Don't do that. Um, but I, 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 I personally feel like David Fincher did a better job than Todd Phillips of sort of addressing those themes mm. of like uh, condemning that activity rather than condoning it. I think in terms of really modern films, Fight Club must have laid some sort of template because think mm. about films like Shutter Island. Now, if you ever get into a film where things just seem a little bit crazy, yeah. you go back to Fight Club and you go, what if it's all in their head? And yeah. I feel like lots of films are doing that now, but I feel like Fight Club is one of the first, you know? Absolutely, it was the OG. Um, mm. And not David Fincher's first film. I think I think his first breakthrough was Alien 3, I want to say. Um, and then he had Seven in 95 um, with Brad Pitt as well. So this mm. is the second film with Brad Pitt. And clearly the two just work so well together. Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden is like perfection. Now you fucking khakis. You were the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. Yeah, I think one of the main problems, I mean, one of the film's only problems really is that Brad Pitt's maybe too charismatic as Tiger Durden because you kind of get to the end of it and he's supposed to be the villain, really. He's leading mm. Ed Norton's character uh, down, down quite a bad path. Um, but we love him so much, we kind of forgive him for it. So there's obviously a lot to love about this film. I personally mm. love the dynamic between these two main characters who turn out to be the same mm. character, spoilers. Um, so tell us a little bit about that in the clip that you want to have a look at. So we all know what it's like being sat next to someone on a plane. That is an emotional commitment, you know? This is the person you're going to have to be like, look, sorry, can I get past to go to the toilet for the seventh time in, you know, in five minutes? Mm -hmm. So when they start hitting it off so soon, you think, hmm, this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, which obviously <laughs> is not what happens. But no, I think it's a really nice introduction to, to seeing them together. So let's have a little look. Oxygen gets you high. In a catastrophic emergency, you're taking giant panic breaths. Suddenly you become euphoric, docile. You accept your fate. It's all right here. Emergency water landing, 600 miles an hour. Blank face Hindu cow. calm as Hindu Hello. cows. <laughs> <laughs> what a simile. Only yeah. Brad Pitt. That's an interesting theory. Just the contrast between them well, straight off the bat, this what like worn down corporate me. zombie. Well, Insomniac. Like look at him, he's, he's, he's laughing, he's smiling kid. for the first time. Yeah. This is the first time we're seeing the narrator laugh life. and enjoy himself. It's like sadness in his eyes though, he's just... We have the exact same, briefcase. The exact same briefcase. Ooh, foreshadowing. Soap. Sorry. I make and I sell soap. Could you even take that much soap on a plane? Not now, you couldn't. And this is how I met Tyler Durden. You know, if you mix equal parts of gasoline and frozen orange juice concentrate, you can make maple. But he's so intense. No, I did not know that. Is he that should true? be creepy. Right. But Pitt is so charismatic and endearing that I don't find this guy creepy. And they've nailed the casting. I can smell his aftershave from here. <laughs> I wish I could. Tell you are by far the most interesting single oh, serving so friend I've ever met. It's one of my favorite kinds of films, which is that you get a completely ex different experience the second time you watch it. So even, even things like the opening title sequence, um, the Ikea sequence, the various conversations he has with Marla Singer as well, uh, where she's the only human he interacts with. So she obviously knows she's only dealing with one person, but he doesn't. You know what, I really think it's time you got out of here. Don't worry, I'm leaving. Yeah, not that we don't love your little visit. You know, you are such a nutcase. I can't even begin to keep up. You start to notice that kind of stuff the second time you watch it, where like Tyler's never in the room when she's there, mm -hmm. or she gets confused about you know what he's talking about, that kind of thing. But yeah, there are so many Easter eggs in this film, mm -hmm. including uh, Tyler Durden's character. So he works as a projectionist in a, uh -huh. oh, in a yeah. cinema, and he splices in pornographic frames into just mm -hmm. random like you know Disney films, and you actually get that in the film as well. So there's yeah, a couple, I know. I there's saw a that couple frames. Time. Also, also. <laughs> Um, we, we kind of told a lie because we said that this is the first time you see Tyler mm. I didn't know until I watched this the second time that he flashes up yes. for a split yeah. second all the way up until that flight yeah so there's that and then of course there's actually the scene that, that I'd love to talk about which is the very first time they fight um, 
which I mean is kind of it's kind of saying a lot about the entire film because every time they fight he is effectively fighting himself and then you have a scene later on where Ed Norton does physically fight himself um but this very very first scene where they fight where uh, Tyler introduces him to the idea of fight club to a degree um is is him punching Brad Pitt in the ear for real by the way because Fincher <laughs> pulled him aside before the scene and said, actually hit him in the ear. So you see Ed Norton uh, kind of laughing after it. But um, yeah, it's a good little, it's a good little, it's a great scene. And then also when, you, again, when you watch it back, you're realizing this guy's just hitting himself, you know? Mm. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at that one. So come on, hit me before I lose my nerve. Oh, God, this is crazy. So go crazy, let her rip. Hey, I don't know about this. I don't either. Who gives a shit? Now that I, you've told me he was instructed to punch him in the ear for real, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see it again. That's right. What, like in the <laughs> face? <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. And his first punch is so crap as well, I love it. I, I need, is this the one, yeah? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> And that reaction is real as well. Yeah, yeah, been punched really real. Oh, Jesus, real. I'm sorry. Ow! Christ! By the ear, man! <laughs> <laughs> what a weird place to punch someone in the so ear. So strange! It's like in the side of his head. Oh, I love that scene. I mean, it absolutely holds up in every respect. Like, watching it back now, it still completely holds up from the from the themes to the special effects, like everything in it. I think you could have released that this year. And there'd still mm. be something kind of magical about it. Uh, and also, Brad Pitt hasn't aged, so I'd have believed it. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. But yeah, like you're saying, with the boys as well, it's that kind of similar uh, Orwellian kind of thing. There's definitely very similar themes running through uh, the both of these pieces about uh, consumerism and, and about how uh, how willing we are and I think that's why that, that scene on the plane is so interesting you know when he's talking about these people are on a plane that is crashing but they're being mm. fed this oxygen that's just keeping them high they're calm as Hindu cows and it's saying so much about the state of the world which you know it still is today 20 years on god damn it an entire generation working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need yeah and, it, and it's almost like a much better crafted purge film in the sense that in The Purge, people are reverting back to this primal uh, disposition of attack yeah. in order to gain resources or to whatnot. Uh, and here, it's almost like as you go through the film and you realize how many people are in Fight Club, he gets taken into some sort yeah. of police station and he's in the room with the guys meant to be keeping them. They're like, we love what you're doing. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. You're a genius, sir. You said if anyone ever interferes with Project Mayhem, even you, we got to get his balls. If there were no rules, even the most upstanding citizens would revert back to that very primal okay, fight or flight scary. response. And it is scary. It is scary because it feels like, you know, it, there's, there's some, we're, we're all hiding something behind the mask. Yeah, to think what we're capable of. Yeah, it's really mm. interesting. And like, there is, like, there's that whole thing as well. And I think about like human connection, which again, <laughs> quite topical right now, but that Jack mm. is just so disconnected from other people and from humanity. And he gets this offer from Marla Singer, who, okay, she seems like a bit of a kook, but she's a real person who's really offering him a connection. And instead of taking that, he turns to this guy who's telling him to beat the shit out of other guys, you know? And mm. it's, it's, it's like, I'd rather, I'd rather take that kind of aggressive, violent connection than this potentially tender, intimate one that would be ultimately healthier for me. So it's saying a lot there as well. And I think, um, I feel like the boys is going to head in that direction a little bit as well, you know, with this kind of connection between Huey and Starlight and, and various other characters in the show. It's like, are they going to, are they going to do the right thing? Are they going to choose the healthy <laughs> path mm. or are they, are they going to turn to violence and brutality? And you can kind of already see with Huey, he's making some choices uh, that we're not, we're not Definitely. too sure if they're the best, if they're in his best interest. So yeah, I think, I think the two tie together well. This conversation, this conversation is over. Is over. All right. Well, I am. I'm so sorry. We have to stop there. We have been talking and talking endlessly, uh, and I could keep going all day. I honestly could. These are both. Uh, this is a great show and a great movie that uh, we'll probably end up on the phone later talking about as well. But uh, <laughs> for the moment, we will leave there. Next time, we'll be talking about Pan's Labyrinth, which is the perfect film if you like your fairy tales jaw-droppingly dark and your monsters with eyes in their hands.
And we'll also be talking about the brand new show on Prime Video, Tales from the Loop. If you've not seen it yet, this is a powerful sci-fi series about what happens in a town above what is called the Loop, which is a strange contraption built to unlock the mysteries of the universe and make possible things that were previously impossible. And before you ask, no, I'm sorry, it can't guarantee you an online delivery slot. Topical comedy there, <laughs> plenty more where that came from next time. Do be sure to join us then and subscribe so that you know when that is coming up. Okay, so don't forget to use the hashtag Prime Video Club if you're gonna uh, tweet us or leave us any kind of message on social and uh, we'll be sure to get through them and have a little chat about it next time. Thank you so much for doing this with me See today. See you later guys. Thanks. No, it's been, up, it's been awesome. And look, listen, I'm coming for that title, okay? You might be the film buff now. I'm gonna be film buffer <gasps> by next, next time. Next time, Trish see me. you then.